Hello everyone, so in this video my goal is to kind of give you the basic or foundation of what the brain is, what the different parts of the brain do, and I don't really want to go too technical or too challenging on this video because I kind of want to gain your interest and kind of build on that interest because I think the brain is the most important part of your body because it's controlling everything you do, whether you feel it or you don't. And I think it's also important because it's inside your body. And if you don't even know what you're, it's doing, I feel like that's kind of weird. Like it's inside of you, but you don't know what's going on. You don't even really know what it is or what it's doing. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So here I've kind of given a big picture of the brain, literally, because I'm pointing out the three major parts of the brain, or the three biggest categories of the brain, and those are the forebrain, the midbrain, and the hindbrain. The fore now all these have different scientific names associated with them. So for example, the forebrain scientific, na scientific name is the prosencephalon, the midbrain scientific name is the mes mesencephalon, and the hindbrain's scientific name is the rhombencephalon. So in each of these three parts of the brains, they all carry out different functions, and they all do different things and play different roles. For instance, the forebrain is the largest part of the brain and it consists of the part of the brain which has the cerebrum. Now remember the forebrain is the largest part because it was that whole top of the brain that we saw in the other picture. And because it's so big, it's also split into two other categories, the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. The right hemisphere of the brain is indicated by the red, um, the red highlighted side is plays a different role than the left hemisphere, um, as shown by the blue highlighted part. The right hemisphere is responsible for things like creativity, imagination, art, music, connecting your thoughts, and also comprehension, which is like understanding how to do things. It's also responsible for things like 3D forms and control over the left side of the body, such as the left hand and left foot. Now you might be thinking, it's kind of ironic how the right side of the brain is responsible for the left side of the body. So if you are moving your left hand, then your right hemisphere is active. On the other hand, the left hemisphere, the part again highlighted by the blue, is responsible for, instead of imagination and creativity, it's more about like logic and analysis and math, like numerical values, and science, language, reasoning, how to do things, writing, and again, control over the right side of the body. So if you're moving your right hand, your left hemisphere is active. And then there's also this thing called the corpus callosum, which connects these two hemispheres. And um, I can always get more into that in a different video, but again, I don't want to get too technical in this basic video. Okay, so we just talked about the right and left hemisphere. And just a little recap. So the, the big thing is the brain, and then one of the things inside the brain is the forebrain. And then the forebrain is split into the left hemisphere and right hemisphere. But the forebrain can also be split into these four lobes. Now the four lobes all together are called the cerebrum. So the four lobes are the frontal lobe, parental lobe, temporal lobe, and occipital lobe. So, and they each have different functions and each have specific functions, unlike the right and left hemisphere where they're just really broad. So, for instance, the frontal lobe, as indicated by the red, 
covers both the left and right hemispheres and is therefore responsible for reasoning, planning, language, movement, emotions, and problem solving. Next, the parental lobe is more in charge of orientation, movement, like walking, recognition, like remembering people from times long time ago, and perception of stimuli. Third is the occipital lobe, which is indicated by the lighter green, and this is associated with just visual processing, just seeing the things around you and understanding them. Finally is the temporal lobe, that is associated with perception and recognition of auditory stimuli. It's also responsible for memory and speech. This basically means that auditory stimuli, for instance, means just understanding what you're hearing. And this lobe, again, is memory and speech, which just means you can remember things like long-term memory and then speech, just how to say stuff. Okay, so we talked about the forebrain, which was one of the big parts of the brain, one of the three big parts, and now I'm going to talk about the brainstem. So the brainstem consists of the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla. The, and all these things, or the brainstem in general, is found under the limbic system, which is the forebrain, and is responsible for vital functions such as breathing, heartbeat, and blood pressure. So basically, the brainstem is responsible for things that you don't tell your brain to do directly. Your brain just does it. So the midbrain, which is that huge um, light brown hollow part in the middle of the brain, is responsible for things such as vision, hearing, eye movement, and body movement. The, far, the front part of the midbrain is, is the part where you find this big bundle of axons, which are things that help deliver messages. And this big bundle of axons is called the cerebral peduncle. And basically, these axons travel from the cerebral cortex, which is the top part of your spine, and it travels through the brainstem tube, that big colorful tube in a diagram, to the front part of the midbrain. And this basically helps in um, delivering fibers that are really important for voluntary motor functions. Mo voluntary motor functions are, mo are movements that are directly done, again, like the breathing and heartbeat. So another part of the brainstem is the pons, and this is involved with motor control and sensory analysis, analysis, which is information that comes from through the ear first, enters the brain at the pons. The pons are also important for a level of consciousness and sleep. So basically keeping you awake or putting you to sleep, and then also movement and posture. Finally, the last part of the brainstem is the medulla oblongata. That's the full form of the medulla, the purple part of the brainstem that you see in the diagram. And it most resembles a tail. It is responsible for maintaining vital bodily functions, such as breathing and heart rate. The medulla oblongata is found between the pons, the pink part of the diagram, and your spinal cord. Okay, so we just finished talking about all the midbrain and the brainstem and all the functions that correspond with that. Next, the third largest part of the brain, like the third big component of the brain, is the hindbrain. The hindbrain consists of the cerebellum, as shown in the diagram, and it also consists of the limbic system. So the cerebellum is responsible for posture, coordination of movement, and balance. So for example, if you see those people in videos who are stacking cups, that means that their cerebellum is very active because they're very coordinated with their movements, such as their eyes and hands. Also, under the cerebellum lies the limbic system, or the emotional brain, 
and it contains four things, the thalamus, the hypothalamus, the amygdala, and the hippocampus, as shown in the diagram also. The thalamus is gray matter, which is found in the forebrain, and is in charge of motor functions and sensory functions. Almost all sensory information enters this system. So anything you hear, see, smell, almost all of it enters through the thalamus. The hypothalamus lies under the thalamus and is in charge of homeostasis, which is the ability to keep a system at a constant condition. It's also responsible for things like hunger, thirst, emotion, circadian rhythmus, which is your body's internal clock. So when you go to sleep, when you when you feel like waking up, that's your internal clock. And it also the hypothalamus also has control over autonomic over the autonomic nervous system, or the things that are happening in your body that are not directly being done, being directed, such as the heartbeat, breathing, and the digestive process. And finally, the hypothalamus has control over the pituitary pituitary gland, which is important for controlling growth and development, and it's a little small pea-sized gland. Third in the limbic system is the amygdala. It is located in the temporal lobe, as we discussed before, which is in the forebrain, and involved in memory, emotion, and fear. The amygdala is in the front of the temporal lobe, and it's the thing that creates the bulge called the uncus. And then finally, the fourth component in the limbic system is the hippocampus, which controls learning and converting short-term memory into more long-term memory, and also recalling spa spatial relationships, or just, you know, relationships that are happening. And that concludes the three major parts of the brain, the hindbrain, which we just talked about, which also includes the limbic system or the emotional brain. And then we talked about the brainstem and midbrain before. And then we talked about the forebrain, which contains, which can be split in either the hemispheres or the four lobes. So another component in the brain are ventricles. This is just going to be a brief explanation of what ventricles are. So basically, they're tubes in the brain that are filled with something called cerebrospinal fluid. And something else in the brain called the choroid plexus fills the ventricles with this fluid. There are many networks of ventricles in the brain, and they basically provide nutrients and other vital substances to the nerve cells located in the brain so that the nerve cells can fulfill their vital functions. Now, again, this is just a brief explanation, which I will carry on in a later video. Now this is going to be the last content part of the video and it's just fun facts about the brain. The brain is a very unique part of the body because it, first of all it's a three-pounded organ and it's usually the size of your two fists put together. Also, the American Congress actually named the 1990s the decade of the brain because of all the research that was going on um, for the brain. Also, um, the brain is actually wrinkled because it allows there to be more surface area in the crevices and allows for more neuron capacity. And the final fun fact for today is that the gray surface of the brain that covers the brain is made up of nerve cells that are a little thicker than the thickness of your thumb. There are white nerve fibers that lay underneath this gray surface of the brain and they carry signals to nerve cells and other parts of the brain and body. And I will definitely be talking about this in a future video because this is really important and one of the main functions of the brain. So now that we've gone through all the content that I had to go through in this video about the brain, the basic parts of the brain and the functions they play, I'm now going to have a little quiz. So the first question is, what are the three main parts of the brain? Feel free to pause the video if you need more time answering the question. Okay, so the three main parts of the brain are the forebrain, 
the midbrain, and the hindbrain. The second question is, in what part of the brain are the lobes located? The forebrain, midbrain, or hindbrain? And what are the four lobes? So the lobes are located in the forebrain and are the frontal lobe, the parental lobe, the occipital lobe, and the temporal lobe. Okay, there are just three more questions to go. So, the third question, what are the three main parts of the brainstem? So the answer to this question was the midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. If you're looking for more of a challenge, then try and give the um, roles that each of these three parts of the brainstem play. Question four, what are the parts of the limbic system? The four parts of the limbic system are the hypothalamus, thalamus, hippocampus, and amagata. Again, if you're looking for more of a challenge, then describe each of the functions of the four parts. Okay, this is it, the last question. What is a ventricle and what is its purpose? Okay, the answer to question five was, a ventricle is a cavity that is filled with cerebrospinal fluid that gives nutrients and other vital substances to nerve cells. Did you get all the questions right? If so, that's really great. And if not, then just go back through the video and see which parts you need to revise. So here I just listed some of the sources I used to get the information I did. And I hope you enjoyed. Thanks. Bye.